Thank you very much for joining us today from London and for delivering uh, this talk on Elasticsearch, which is uh, your specialty. Thank you, Musa. Thank, thank you, Christoph. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Um, can just everyone confirm if you can hear me fine? Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Perfect. <laughs> OK, perfect. Thank you. So yeah, uh, let's get started. We're going to talk about introduction to Elasticsearch. So what is the agenda for my uh, a brief talk? Uh, basically, I'm going to talk about introduction to Elasticsearch. What are the use cases of Elasticsearch? Some of the benefits we'll discuss of Elasticsearch and how it is different from traditional databases. And then we are going to talk about uh, a distribution called Open Distro for Elasticsearch. That's uh, uh, Open Distro Elasticsearch, which we use on our managed platform as well. Um, then we'll do briefly discuss how we can index our first document and then tell how you distribute your documents, basically. Uh, when I say documents, is the messages and things like that. Um, so uh, before I started, a little bit about myself. My name is Musa Shirazi. I work uh, as a senior consultant in uh, for uh, Insta Cluster. Responsibilities are normally providing uh, consultancy services to uh, big organizations, uh, you know, like uh, design, architecture, health checks, any issues they have it uh, for technologies like Cassandra, Elasticsearch, and Kafka. So feel free to send an email or add me on LinkedIn if you have any questions after that workshop. Uh, more than happy to answer. OK, so uh, before we started, what is Elasticsearch? So uh, Elasticsearch is an open source distribution search and analytics engine. right? It is built on Lucene. Um, the Apache, uh, basically Elasticsearch also called as a distribution document store. And sometimes it is referred to as uh, you know, in-house Google. Uh, and you can search very big data very fast. That's the advantage of Elasticsearch. Uh, and there are different use cases. You're not limited to one specific use case. In fact, you know, you can have uh, uh, different use cases uh, for, uh, for Elasticsearch. Uh, and uh, basically, um, as you can see in this diagram, we have like apps, different programming languages. It could be a log file, it could be a server, it could be a network device. Uh, inputting those messages uh, and messages can be in the form of log messages, uh, metrics, configs, documents, uh, CSV files, database data can all be inserted into uh, Elasticsearch cluster, uh, which distribute data and then can be then used by different outputs. So output, uh, when I say output, different applications such as, you know, uh, security applications uh, and um, and uh, other, uh, you know, Kibana and uh, Kibana is like a visualization tool. You can visualize your data as well. So that's in a nutshell what Elasticsearch is. Uh, so uh, behind the scene, Elasticsearch runs on Lucene. Uh, and what is Lucene? Uh, in fact, Lucene is an open source platform as well. Uh, it is uh, uh, written in Java. Okay, One of the drawback, and it's really powerful search engine, in fact. Uh, and uh, one of the drawback for uh, Lucene was that it was very challenging to distribute data or to maintain or to uh, integrate with, to interact with. And that's where, uh, you know, this Elasticsearch project started back in 2010. Uh, where uh, the idea was that the elastic search should take the power of Lucene, uh, but uh, make it very easy to to deploy or distribute data, and that's where the uh, elastic search came in. Um, and that, from there, it just kicked in, and you know, uh, it's used by big organizations now. So that's basically it, but it uses the power of Lucene. So behind the scene, all is Lucene. Um, so some of the use cases of Elasticsearch. So there are different use cases of Elasticsearch. Um, before I will talk about that, I just wanna, uh, I've included this slide particularly to just give a little bit history about myself, how I started doing Elasticsearch. So before going into data networking, I used to be working as a network engineer. And uh, one of the responsibilities for us was to see the logs, if there was any big issues. We I was working for a company where we had around 17 million users 
that was a big telecom organization and uh, uh, the idea was basically when the when there used to happen some issue happened that we didn't have elastic search at that time uh, we had to literally go and look for the logs uh, either manually or when we were putting that into some databases, database would crash, takes ages to be, give us the results. So it was quite frustrating and literally this was a, uh, you know, uh, even issue happened, I used to scratch my head and that's where uh, the in Elasticsearch came in and that was at that time very new um, the product, uh, like it was 2.0 version at that time. And we started just ingesting those logs. We said, you know what, why don't we put that logs um, and literally, when we started using it, changed our uh, the way we could, you know, troubleshoot our uh, daily issues. So where we'll take hours to uh, to uh, investigate something, it would take minute to to look for those logs and find the uh, needle in the haystack in minutes. In fact, so literally saves a lot of time, and uh, that's where it advantages. Like it's a search engine, but it can be used for different use cases. Uh, so yeah, uh, one uh, again. Let's let's talk in a little bit more detail what those use cases are. Um, so one of the common uh, use case for Elasticsearch is uh, a log and log analysis. Lots of companies uses it. Uh, some companies use it for um, network monitoring uh, and uh, you know their server monitoring and uh, like you can send the metrics and then uh, you can analyze it. As you know, I mean, as I mentioned, uh, you know the traditional database systems are always not a best choice for full text searching, right? Uh, because they are slow um, and obviously because of those uh, you know the relationships. It can cause uh, um, uh, slow your searches and things like that. And there is no availability out of box availability of fuzzy searching, or if you type mistake, any uh, spelling mistake, and it gives you an uh, idea whether you were looking for different word. And that's where Elasticsearch shines really, because Elasticsearch have that capability inbuilt, okay? Other use case for Elasticsearch is, um, which is very much on rise, is security analytics. What security analytics does is basically lots of companies now who are using uh, uh, seems like you know um, very expensive things where they'll spend millions just to analyze the logs and the events. Uh, they have this you know start started moving from those old systems to Elasticsearch because it's open source it's free put your data into it uh, and obviously network users were using it for log monitoring why don't security guys use that as well and that's again uh, become a big um, a use case now uh, from that perspective and then you have enterprise search as well uh, the idea for enterprise search is that you put all your documents, not all documents, like all the metadata about your information. So obviously each organization has lots of lots of applications where you have to search on daily basis. So the idea is why don't we uh, put all those metadata information about every data into Elasticsearch. So you make a search in Elasticsearch and then uh, redirect to your uh, certain application which you're looking for. So that's basically is another feature is like autocomplete and all the, all of out of box uh, searches are um, are available. Um, when it comes to uh, the usage or companies using it, big organizations um, uh, use them like. Um, and I'll show you one slide is there where how it's rapidly been used by organizations um, uh, and their. So let's go a little bit more about, okay, as I mentioned about earlier about log and log analysis. Uh, it is one of the common use cases. And uh, for example, at Insta cluster in our uh, environment, when we, uh, we were having difficulty uh, when uh, we had a massive growth in our business of a managed platform, and we needed to find a solution where we can give uh, you know uh, our clients uh, quickly you know if there is any issue with their clusters and that's why we started we adopted as well Elasticsearch so now our team support teams around the globe can literally uh, you know when there is an issue they can in fact proactively find those issues and tell the customers that you might have this issue go and solve that so this is really useful for us 
in fact as well uh, and obviously linkedin uses for uh, you know for their um, uh, network monitoring as i said uh, facebook uses elasticsearch for enterprise search uh, and uh, um, some companies like strat uses for log monitoring these are some of the companies like netflix barclays slack um, and USSA, they use it for security, for cyber security and security analytics. As I said, this is a very common and very widely used use case now uh, from that perspective. And then we've got uh, application level monitoring as well, which is done through, uh, you know, um, can done as well using Elasticsearch. Uh, uh, one thing basically uh, who uses Elasticsearch uh, that is uh, uh, basically, um, uh, just one second, just have someone sending the messages. Okay, sorry. Uh, so yeah, so uh, so companies, uh, this is a slide deck from a, a website called Stackshare, okay? That's basically uh, is, uh, shows which companies using Elasticsearch at the moment, right? Uh, and uh, like how they are using and what their use case are. So I looked at in 2019, November, that 2,613 companies using it. And July, in fact, now if I look at it, it would be a lot more. 3,025 uh, 3, uh, companies were using Elasticsearch for certain use cases. And, uh, uh, and basically, uh, and it is is on rise. That means that it's not declining. The Elasticsearch usage is on rise. Okay. So some of the benefits for Elasticsearch is uh, it is scalable. It provides full text search support, uh, as I said, because it's a search engine behind the scene. Uh, it provides RESTful API. That's very easy. That any any application who support RESTful API can just connect to Elasticsearch and can start inserting or uh, retrieving data. Okay, uh, it has a distributed approach and we will talk about that, how this is distributed uh, because that works in a cluster environment. Uh, and uh, uh, there are slides which explain how you distribute data and make it very easy to distribute it. Okay, uh, features like autocomplete, uh, multilingual support, document um, uh, fuzzy searching uh, or and very fast search, as, as I gave an example, you can really search terabytes of data very quickly if it's been properly modeled, uh, I would say, and uh, and that's very uh, is useful in an organization where you have a lot of big data, okay? So, uh, so benefit again is that Elasticsearch is distributed system in nature, okay? And it can easily scale. And you normally horizontally scale instead of vertically. What I mean by is that horizontal scaling is you add more nodes or 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 servers instead of adding a RAM and uh, uh, you know the CPUs. Okay, uh, and uh, basically you can start Elasticsearch cluster with one node and it can distribute to hundred of nodes. Okay, that's that's the beauty of Elasticsearch. Uh, RESTful API, as I mentioned anything any application which uses restful api which is very common now uh, can communicate with elasticsearch distributed approach like you have multiple nodes in a cluster and that's where you use it um, elasticsearch implements lot of feature when it comes to search such as you know splitting your text into words customizing it stemming it and then giving an autocomplete features and things like that. So this is basically out of box. You don't have to go and configure anything. You know, I don't have to add any plugins or anything like with any other databases. It is there or all there out of box. Um, autocomplete feature is something where when you're writing something, it gives you results. Is that like same like when you start typing on Google or any search engine and you get those, uh, you know, um, uh, those autocomplete uh, um, features that is also available in in Elasticsearch. And uh, again, thing is fuzzy searching. Let's suppose if you're having any 
spelling mistakes so it will ask you you were looking for other documents or were you looking for the same documents uh, or information so that's basically is there an out of box from Elasticsearch perspective okay uh, what's that what's that, what's that? <coughs> sorry I just interrupt you one sec we have uh, two questions one is for you mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how to answer so I'm, I'm going to, to put you on the spot sure can Elasticsearch be used as a BI tool and Kibana as reporting? Uh, yes, it, uh, BI tool, uh, uh, yes, it can be used as a business analytics tool. If I talk about BI as a business analytics, you can do, basically this is another slide, which is just literally there, is that it is not restricted to only log analysis or anything. You can basically use that for any type of data. And that's where this slide tell it that you can use that for security, ops, developer, management, HR, and you can <coughs> use that for reporting as well. In fact, I did give one uh, webinar last uh, yesterday, uh, which was purely on uh, Kibana, how can you make sense of your data? So yeah, if you go to InstaCluster website on a on demand, there will be uh, some webinar for that as well. Okay, so we Thank got- you, Mr. There is a second question, but I think it's it's maybe more for Anoop. Because uh, uh, I think Anoop, you have a bit of experience here. The question is, uh, is there any blog or tutorials to create customer connector uh, for API data producer? I'm not sure what you mean by API data producer, uh, but let's say producer in general. Um, so Anoop, do you, do you know, mm -hmm. do you have some some hints here? I think if you want to build a Kafka connect connector, uh, there is a general framework that you need to follow. And depending upon, it can be it can be applied to any system. So I'm quite sure the API data producer can like you can. So there are two ways you can produce data from your API data producer. You can write a Kafka producer, which will simply read from your APIs and produce data to Kafka or you can create a connector, which is essentially source connector, which is essentially uh, working as a producer underneath, but it has specific semantics to directly integrate your API endpoint to Kafka. And to develop that, you need to uh, follow a specific uh, Java terminologies or, or you need to basically follow Java uh, Kafka Connect framework. And with that, and there is plenty of documentation available for, for it online. So you can choose either of the methods. Thank you, Anoop. Musa, <laughs> there is a third question. Uh, it's about query DSL. I don't know if you have some slides around that today. Uh, but... uh, will be, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yes, Christoph, so just to answer this. Uh, in fact, this is, uh, we are just doing an introduction and maybe a little bit touching it, but Query DSL, DSL itself on its own is a big topic and we are planning uh, to have a full day workshop. So look out for that. I mean, uh, and where, that's where we will be covering uh, purely on Elasticsearch, right? Because, uh, and this one, we are just going to cover a bit of introduction only and touching okay. some of the concepts. So I guess Kishnandu, so we will have this workshop at some point. Uh, I'm not sure when and, and where, uh, but you, you probably want just to, to follow us on Twitter or, or find somewhere to follow us on, on LinkedIn if you prefer, because we, we always advertise our events on, on those platforms. Uh, so if you want to have this uh, more advanced session with us, um, yeah, just follow us. That's it. Thank you, Musa. Uh, please continue. Thank you, Christopher. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, this slide, um, again, I've explained already that limited Elasticsearch itself, because you can insert any type of data and analyze it different way and visualize it different way. It's not limited to one type of teams. You have security team, developer, architecture. So any team which had their own data can be ingested into Elasticsearch and displayed or visualized or even integrated with their applications for search engine can be done. So management, HR, and things. Um, Stuff like that. Okay, uh, now let's 
little bit different take a difference between different technologies with Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch, if we talk about Splunk, because I see Splunk is mainly is in the similar category where it's used, uh, where uh, business is used for searching and blog analysis or dashboards and uh, things like that. So there is not much difference, to be honest, between Elasticsearch and Splunk, apart from a Elasticsearch is free of cost. It's like open source, right? Uh, whereas on the Splunk side, uh, you have to spend some good chunks of money uh, to get the similar type of uh, uh, advantages. Um, again, uh, if we do side by side comparison, uh, Splunk uses Splunk forwarder, um, uh, and then on the locks uh, on the Elasticsearch side. Uh, you have log stash, file beat. Now you can have Fluent D. I'll talk about literally about the architecture as well quickly. Uh, that's where we can uh, discuss about that. And then you have tools like Kibana or Grifana, which can be used to visualize your data. Uh, and that's basically uh, is where you can use Elasticsearch. Uh, and then a Splunk has its own uh, thing. Uh, only on based on, uh, in fact, Elasticsearch is on Apache Lucene, which is also an open source and uh, uh, and free to use from a search engine perspective, and both support REST API. Now, other question I am always asked: What is the difference between an Elasticsearch and a relational databases? Okay, there is a huge difference because Elasticsearch on its own is not a database; it is a NoSQL document store. That is very very important. There are no concepts of joins, relations, like traditional behaviors. Okay, uh, the easier and other on the advantage from Elasticsearch is it's a very easy to scale. So you do a side by side comparison in the sense of when you're looking and discussing uh, Elasticsearch has index, whereas relational database is like a database, right? So we have index. When we put any messages or anything or any type of data, we index into index. Okay, and then we have a table in relational database, whereas we have type in uh, Elasticsearch and then document. Uh, we'll talk about document, so I'm just gonna, uh, uh, and field is also another one as well, uh, which is basically uh, because uh, Elasticsearch uses key value pair, so you have a key and a value, and that's basically the field, basically. Uh, so, so use cases where Elasticsearch uh, relational databases are not suitable where Elasticsearch will shine is basically is a relevance-based searching or a full searching uh, search as you type when you make a mistake, log analytics, and for Tenix, that's another good search. Like imagine if you're searching for New York uh, and you just write NYC. So Elasticsearch will understand it that you were trying to find some document related to, uh, to, to New York. Uh, so that's where uh, things can be. Very powerful. Okay, uh, now a bit of a history about Elasticsearch. Uh, it was started by an engineer called Shea Bannon, who uh, released his first version in 2010. Uh, and the idea was, is to make it very scalable, right? Uh, because uh, there were a lot of limitation from Elasticsearch perspective, um, uh, uh, like from the, uh, from the Lucene perspective, because it was quite difficult to, and that's where uh, it, the, uh, he then started a company called Elastic.co, which continue uh, and uh, released different version, and current version is 7.8 or 9. That's the latest version at the moment. However, in 2019, uh, uh, there was another. Uh, uh, distribution was started by backed by Amazon AWS. So the idea was that some of the features, obviously with Elastic.co, there are features like security, machine learning, uh, and a lot of those enterprise level features, you have to pay for that. Like there is a cost involved, um, uh, license cost involved. From an Amazon perspective, have open distro for Elasticsearch, provide those features free of cost. And we'll discuss those features uh, there. Like add-on plugins are free of cost, like there is no cost involved. It's pure open source. Any company can use it. And that's where uh, open distro is used for. They are behind the scene, both are same because both are using Elasticsearch open source version. 
okay uh, so uh, just in a super high level open distro for elastic search is a pure apache 2 license distribution uh, it's backed by aws uh, open distro come with additional capabilities on top of a vanilla uh, open source version uh, which is basically uh, you know alerting security sql um, and, and this kind of uh, things right um, and an enterprise grade level security in fact because one of the big issues in the market now we see is that companies because it's open source if they don't get any subscription for molastic.co they just keep it open and then they get hacked and things like that then that's where you know uh, if you use open distro for last year it comes with those security features built in okay so so yeah benefit of open distro for elastic search are pure open source enterprise grade security features uh, and community driven it's purely backed by community uh, any feature which will be added in future amazon has made sure that that will be free to use by anyone uh, without any cost okay uh, but the, again, this is not a product of uh, Amazon or uh, it is community driven, but back started from them. That's to be very clear. Uh, so some of the security features are like encryption, authentication, RBAC, rollback, multi-tenancy and audit logging. So on your data, you know, uh, because of the GDPR and uh, PCI and ISO, companies are required to have the secure uh, uh, data Store, and that's where open distro can be very useful uh, so and some of the new features for our open door distro for last set is like performance uh, root cost analysis anomaly detection knn search is another very powerful search features which is added on uh, open distro for last search and also machine learning uh, algorithm and that's basically where um, you know elastic search uh, open distro for elastic search features are and they'll keep adding new features as well so uh, it's important now because that's the reason i've added these slides because there is a bit of a confusion that is elastic search or open distro are they same and what is the differences and things like that so you know it is important that i just go and explain a little bit about them as well uh, so again uh, there is one pure open source platform which is basically both elastic.co and open distro for elastic search use them okay but they does not come with features like alerting authentication access control encryption um, machine learning sql so if you purely install a pure vanilla version of open source uh, you would basically will not go get those features now when it comes to elastic.co uh, distribution you have some features available on a basic basic type of distribution which is like canvas sql uh, and elasticsearch monitoring but again they don't provide also those enterprise grade features because if you have to get that from them you have to get a subscription for that okay on the other hand open distro for elasticsearch give all those features free of cost like without any cost you just go and download it you can even contribute it they are pure open source okay so alerting authentication access control uh, so that's why it's it's now is it's adopted widely now open distro for elastic search as well uh, but as i said and again repeating it behind the scene it's the same elastic search so there's no difference okay now let's discuss a little bit about what is elk because that's what you will hear a lot if you're new to this uh this elastic search uh, um, distributions so elastic search consists of basically a start elastic search it's its own service right as i mentioned all about you know the advantages then there is a separate component that is installed separately on separate servers which is called log stash a log stash is a tool which can be used to get data from different sources so instead of you writing your own python scripts uh, or you know you're writing your restful apis and all those things or you need to enrich your data for example you want to add some fields onto data when it's going to elastic search you have some business data for example and you want to let's say you have like a sensitive data and you want to remove some password before data is inserted into elastic search you can use log stash because it can read from csv file it can read from different 
there is a huge list of inputs like different application it can read from and then push that data into Elasticsearch. Okay, and the other side is Kibana. And Kibana is where you visualize your data because data does not make any sense if you're not able to properly visualize it. And that's where Kibana comes in. It's a very powerful tool, which gives you the ability to basically look for those uh, things. And that's where, uh, as you can see, you have log file, metrics, config files, information that comes in all input into separate server, uh, which is a log stash, uh, which has ability to do filtering or enriching your documents and then send that output to Elasticsearch where then the data is stored in Elasticsearch cluster. And then you have Kibana, which go and just look for that data and visualize in beautiful way. And that's how the visualization looks like. So basically, if you can see, this is one dashboard uh, where you can uh, see uh, information about, for example, this one showing a particular server information. And that's where you, go, you can create those very powerful visualizations as well. And as I mentioned earlier, I just gave one webinar yesterday on Kibana. So please do look at it. I went through detail and I created similar dashboards on uh, on the webinar. So that was very useful. Uh, and then you can create your dashboards and build queries and things like that. So lots of advantage of that. There's another also a architecture going on at the moment It's called EFK. So the difference between ELK and ESK is that F bit which is called Fluent D and Fluent Bit. So this is another open source platform, uh, which is being widely now used by big organization to enrich and get that data from, uh, um, from different sources. And that's where this EFK uh, uh, come in. And also due to the rise of Kubernetes as well, it is becoming quite common to use Fluent Bit to get data from different pods, push that to a Fluent D or directly to Elasticsearch. And then you can monitor your Kubernetes applications and logs and things like that on to their uh, using the Elasticsearch. That's very powerful from that perspective, right? Uh, Elasticsearch installation features, to be honest, you can install anywhere. You can install on your uh, Raspberry Pi, you can install on Docker, you can install on VMware. At InstaCluster, we provide managed platform for it. Insta, uh, open distro for Elasticsearch, which means you can just go on our website, click a few buttons, and you'll have your cluster up and running. Okay, Make it very easy uh, and deploy that, and then you can start using it. So yeah, um, so and on on top, obviously we provide uh, SLAs and uh, you know uh, we have a um, support team around the globe who'll take care of your cluster and if there is any issue, uh, we'll go further from you know they will just contact you if there is an issue. Okay, so before we talk, there's a few more uh, topics to cover. Christoph, should we cover the topic and then have a question in the end? Uh, right, maybe there are a few questions. Yeah, the, can you can you can you read them already? Uh, maybe I just let you read them and answer them if you have access. Sure, that's <laughs> fine. So, can we have an external script from ES Kibana? Splunk can do that. Help to implement a lot of automation use case. Can that be achieved by ES Kibana? Also, how difficult is to modify Kibana dashboard and custom styling? Uh, for this answer to is. Yes, there are plugins. You can write your own plugins for Kibana if you're talking about uh, and make it because obviously Kibana is open source. So you literally can write your plugin, suggest them into community and then use it. Uh, how easy it is, uh, to be honest, it's very easy and very give you a lot more control of custom styling and things like that. I mean, in the end, the styling wise is the colors and the you know the font size and things like that. This is all there. Um, I will highly recommend look at this um, uh, pre uh, presentation. It covers that as well. But if you want to go and put like a CSS and things like that, I'm sure some of the visualization do support it, but some may not do it. Just to be sure, uh, there is something called Visual Builder. If you are start using it, look for Visual Builder in Elasticsearch. That gives you uh, Kibana that gives you a lot of control about custom styling as well. 
Okay, also experience Kibana provides a very rich experience. The new 7.90 version is amazing. Elastic.co bring update to Kibana every two months almost. But Open Distro was released in 2018 and no update. So how it easy is to rely on Open Distro? Okay, now to answer your question, I'm not sure uh, how, uh, where you see that it's not been updated by 2018. Current version of Open Distro is 1.8. So maybe, you know, that is a confusion there because they don't use the same versioning thing. They use 1.8, which is relies on 1.7.8 Elastic, which was the last release. It just came a few months ago. So the latest version of Open Distro also is updated uh, there. Uh, Kibana also is based on their pure Open Distro. So you will see, Whatever changes have seen in Kibana, I installed it yesterday and I could see the, you know, the, the latest update uh, there. Obviously, you will find some differences between Elastic.co uh, because they are heavily using more on, you know, in Kibana as well. But from an open source perspective, when there is an update in open source Kibana, that is also pushed into uh, open distro as well. Okay, so uh, let's. Uh, uh, go and discuss about the next topic, which is basically index your first document. That's very important uh, to, to just give you a little bit introduction what the document is about, because I was talking about document. So document is a basic unit of information that is indexed into Elasticsearch, okay? And that is basically in the form of JSON. So anything, will be a JSON, which means you'll have a key and a value. And that document can be anything like a log entry, a tweet, or some system metric, a blog post, right? Could be a blog post of hundreds of lines or a log line of one line. Everything is a document. CSV row in a, uh, in a CSV is a document or a weather information is also a document. Right. So make sure that document concept is clear. Every document, and that's where we search for. We always search for document. We call Elasticsearch as a document store. Okay. Now here is an example where we have a tweet from Insta Cluster, where we, if we were to put that into an Elasticsearch, we will convert that tweet into what we call key value pair. So username, Insta Cluster, tweet, the content of that tweet, and the time, what time that tweet went. But this all is one document, okay? And that's basically pushed into Elasticsearch as a JSON format. Now, imagine if you have another tweet, that will be a second document into Elasticsearch, right? And this is another example of document where we are using a CSV file to insert some electronics data information, right? That is again a one line, but that one line is then converted, can be converted into something called a JSON which is mean that you have a key of category and name, price, uh, you know, and, and things like that. And that's basically then if it's inserted into Elasticsearch, that is one document. If there is another line, that will be treated as other document. If you have millions of lines of Elasticsearch, that means you have on the CSV, you will have millions of documents inside Elasticsearch. Okay, uh, those documents, are basically, when we store them into Elasticsearch, we call, call them index. So Elasticsearch index is a collection of those documents that have somehow some special, uh, like same characteristics. So for example, you have an index for a logging data, but that is when you say logging data, you could have logs from network, you could have from firewall, or you could have logs from servers. That is one way of you know indexing your data. Other way you could have, you say, no, I want separate for server logs. I want separate, separate uh, index for firewall logs. I want separate for uh, other things. So you index that way. So you have a lot of flexibility, okay? Uh, for example, it's the same as with tweets as well. So imagine you're getting some social networking data. You say, I want anything from a user which comes from a Twitter into a tweet index and anything comes from Facebook, I'm gonna put them into a Facebook index. So these are all example of index, okay? 
and that index is distributed. As you can see in this diagram, we had distributed. So the document comes in, it is logging into uh, to node, and that nodes then distribute does uh, those uh, information. Okay, uh, and basically uh, uh, you can. Uh, uh, this is an example of a tweet index. Again, I example wise that tweet index is converted into a JSON and then uh, the advantage for Elasticsearch, the way it does is basically it distribute uh, this using some concept called shard. Obviously, we will not be uh, covering this in this lecture, but this is how it distributed. When the data comes in, it put them into smaller chunks and those chunks are then distributed amongst different nodes. In this example, we have two nodes, but there could be hundreds of nodes where your data could be distributed. But the beauty is that when it comes to search back, it will make sure you get the accurate result as possible from all those results. So it gets the results from all those nodes and return to the user. Okay, and that's basically where uh, it is very uh, uh, used. Okay, so uh, a document can be indexed using a post and put because as I talk about that, it is a RESTful API. In this example, we are using a put API. So imagine if you're using some Python script or you're writing some uh, Java code, if you want to insert it, you can do it using a put command where you put, give the name of an index, type of a document, which is always an underscore document, and then the ID, if you don't put an ID, it automatically adds as well. So it gives you a lot more flexibility as well. So you can have some documents or with uh, manual IDs, but you can have an auto-generated ID as well. Okay, and that's where you can do it. Now, when it comes to uh, post, that means you can go and update your record. So for example, if you wanted to go and put like a specific uh, uh, ID, you also have the abil ability to update your document. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, a CRUD group, um, so Elasticsearch does support CRUD operations, which is, you know, create, uh, delete, and update, uh, and things like that. And um, then anything to get it, we use get API. And again, there was a question, uh, uh, how the query DSL work and it's difficult. Uh, yeah, I agree. And that's where we can use get and query DSL, uh, which, one example is underscore search, where I'm going to say, do underscore search on a specific index and give me all those documents. But there is a lot of options available where you can do a uh, lot of other, um, um, other uh, uh, like searches, aggregations, and things like that, okay? Uh, and basically, uh, that is where we can just quickly look at it, how uh, Elasticsearch distribute data. As I explained, it do it using the shards. So the shards is basically divides into smaller chunks and then put them into something called uh, shards. So for example, when you create a new index, you tell how many chunks of data you want to divide it in. So in this example, we said we wanna put it into three shards, okay? Uh, and then how does Elasticsearch scale, for example? So in this example, we have a single node cluster. So always a cluster and we were putting some data source and we thought now we will put that into three shards, right? So our logs data is divided into three shards, okay? And now it started to become heavy. We do horizontal scaling. We added three nodes now, two more nodes. And that's the beauty, as soon as you add two more nodes into Elasticsearch cluster, you don't have to do anything. It will automatically move its shards to two other nodes as well. And that's where it will start to distribute then when the new data comes in, okay? But what if that data, you know, shard goes down? You loses your data, right? And that's how you don't want that, right? This is what, you don't want this picture, right? And that's where you use something called concept of replica shards. What replica shards does is that it basically create a copy of its own data of its own shard and then distribute it. So even if there was a failure, you still have a copy of those shards, which was in this example, if you see P0 shard is a primary shard, also has a copy of replica on this R0 on this one. 
So this will be the one which will have a copy of that shard. And this is how this picture is distributed to show that the shards are also distributed here and there. Uh, and that's basically it provides you throughput and uh, uh, you know replica shards can be give you more fast uh, searches and it will provide you throughput. Um, just important consideration before we finish, it's almost done, is basically is that don't put too many shards as well. And that's where uh, you know you have to have 50 GB or 10 to 50 GB data. Uh, where it should be and also what are the recommendation for shard like every data has its own ways of distributing like different characteristics so you cannot just have one method for every type of thing so you can have some uh, data which will have more shards than the other and that's where we do uh, plan to have a full day workshop where we will be covering all those big topics like searching and mapping and data ingestions and things like that and security. So yeah, uh, please inquire about that. And that is it for me. If you have any questions, please post anything you have. Why do you always ask questions when I've got a mouthful of my dinner? I've just <laughs> taken a and then you say questions. I feel real. Sure. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Um, obviously, I mean, if people have got any questions about, you know, Elasticsearch or the open distro for Elasticsearch, mm -hmm. they, they need to get in touch with you guys because you've been doing this stuff for a long time. And there's, and there's lots of mistakes that you've made that you probably don't want your other people to make and follow, follow your mistakes. They want to get it right. Correct. So they can have a conversation with you. But um, if they wanted to have a bit of sort of um, elementary experience around Elasticsearch, how would you recommend they get started just so they can start to play with it? Elementary, and, uh, got you. Uh, the best idea would be, I would say, just download uh, Elasticsearch distribution, okay? Uh, like either open distro for Elasticsearch or uh, from the elastic.co because obviously behind the scene, the free one, the basic ones are the same because if you're not using for enterprise, uh, you know, you can use them without the feature. So download them, uh, use them as a Docker or as a like a RPM and start playing with it. Like uh, documentation, I would say Elastic.co has a very good documentation about Elasticsearch. Uh, and that's where it comes in. And obviously, I think there is a lot of demand from for us as well. Uh, you know, lots of, uh, of our clients and other comes in to prepare something for Elasticsearch as well. And we're thinking very, uh, you know, uh, on this where we can give out like a basic courses for for people to just go and learn about these basics and practice that as well. So that's also in um, discussion at the moment. Awesome, because I know that um, <clears throat> huge, huge data companies like um, Atlassian, mm -hmm. you know, you, uh, you know, use Elasticsearch for a lot, long, long time as well. So it's incredibly robust, that's you know, right. production, all the rest of that stuff. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I suppose I mean there's lot you know, there's lots of opportunity to be able to, you know, to um, Elastic is a commercial product in some ways. Mm -hmm. They have a fantastic freebie offering. Mm -hmm. But what are the different like, what is the you know, what is the break point, you know, when you start to have to consider commercial options? Well, uh, you know, uh, I had wrote a one blog as well. This is basically where the uh, uh, some people don't think about this at all. Like I've seen lots of companies, they they deploy Elasticsearch as a free version. They don't go for that enterprise features. True. And all of a sudden they see themselves on the big news that one terabyte of their big data has been lost or been uh -huh. taken. Uh, yeah, you know, it's been hacked. The reason being is not... Nothing, you know, it could be literally they could have a like a security features to store to just give a control, which some of them don't use it. So my recommendation is as you start going into production, I would recommend to start considering it. You want to use open distro for elastic like you want to you don't want to spend too much money. That's fine. Open distro for elastic search is there. Uh, Elastic.co as well. If you, uh, you know, want to get the subscription. So I would ideally as soon as you are in production, even though you're not big as an organization, I would still put it. And one thing is try to avoid putting your Elasticsearch cursor in front of the uh, internet. Try
try not to do that, expose that, because this is another thing is why by mistake when you're doing on the, uh, you know, you are in a uh, like a um, non-production environment and then you move into production, you forget to control that from there. So yeah, these are those things. But again, now uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, requirements from PCI and all those. So companies, even they are not big, they require this control. And, and that's where we should be think a company should be thinking, and that's the advantage of coming to open dist like for us like Insta cluster because we provide out of box everything like you know the security and the PCI compliance and the controls and things like that. So yeah, hope I answer your question. Yeah, it certainly does. So it, sound, it sounds like the takeaway is there's it, it, it's easy to get going, yes. and, and you can have fun, but if you ever want to consider you know, taking it a bit further towards production. Uh, it's good to speak to the people that have got the scars already and can advise you and help you to avoid getting hurt. <laughs> That's, spot on. That's exactly what you said. Yes, exactly. Excellent. No more, no more questions for me. Any questions for anybody else? Thank you. How are we doing, guys? I have, I have all the questions from the question section. I think we are up to date, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, wait. I've um, already uh, covered them, both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that, that's good. Yeah. I have answered. Uh, it was oh, ordering in Kafka. So basically, you need to, uh, a single partition will, will give you ordering guarantee. So you need to partition your data wherever a specific order is wanted. Yeah, that's, I think, most of the questions. Which what am I just doing? Uh, it's just to post in the, the the next meetup for you guys back in, just in case anybody missed it. I know it flies off the screen. I've just posted the next meetup for you guys into the chat window there. Yep. Uh, sounds good. Uh, so I guess uh, to conclude from InstaCluster Insta side, uh, we have uh, a project, a GitHub project with some exercise to play with Cassandra, Kafka, Elasticsearch, with uh, a self-contained uh, Docker Compose file that you can just pin up and um, some instruction on how to load some data and, and get it to flow through a pipeline. So I'm just going to repost uh, the GitLab link right now in the chat. And um, uh, what I invite you is, you know, just, just go there and play with it. You have an exercise around COVID-19, which I guess is, is a bit on topic at the moment. There is also a word clock exercise. Uh, in each case, there is a dedicated uh, Markdown file, of course. So just, just click on the right Markdown. And every time you have all the instruction on how to run the exercise and get some data flowing uh, through your pipeline. Um, so I think that covers everything uh, we wanted to present today. Um, so I, I guess, yeah, I guess, Stefan, I'm going to give you back the microphone. Uh, yeah, let me just see if I can just switch back over. This takes far, far too much coordination at, at this time of night. <laughs> All right, um, I think just in summary, what what a fantastic way to what a fantastic way to launch our uh, workshops here, and thank thank you so much, Instacluster for taking the time to provide all that marvelous information. There's been some really, really positive feedback, really good engagement in the in the chats and also in the in the questions. 